with the scent of potpourri Filled with commit to memory Crossing the felt ropes Watching from home on my TV Looking at all my eyes can see They tell me I view obsessively Hello and welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, where a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com, and while every episode will always be free, if you'd like to support what we do here, you can become a patron at Patreon.com slash ObsessiveViewer for uh, tons of bonus audio content, including TV and book reviews, immediate reaction movie reviews, Patreon potpourri episodes, movie commentary tracks, and early access to content. Um, again, that's at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. I'm your host, Matt Hurt, and you can find me on social media and on Letterboxd at Obsessive Viewer. And joining me today are two of my friends and colleagues from the Indiana Film Journalist Association. Uh, first, we have uh, returning guest Andy Carr, whose work can be found at filmyap.substack.com, where he has reviewed recent releases such as Nope and Where the Crawdads Sing. And you can also find his podcast, Odd Trilogies, which has recently celebrated its 50th episode with an episode covering the first three films of Bong Joon-ho. Uh, welcome to the show, Andy. Thanks. I'm, I'm happy to be back and excited. Yeah, I'm very excited to have you back. And uh, you guys can follow Andy on Letterboxd at Dandable and on Twitter at Odd underscore Trilogies. And also joining us today, making his first appearance on the Obsessive Viewer podcast, is Mr. Joe Shearer. Uh, Joe is a critic who writes for MidwestFilmJournal.com and has reviewed such films as Lightyear, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and X, which those three movies, like... Two of them. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) You can find Joe on Letterboxd at Joe Shearer. Uh, Welcome to the show, Joe. How are you guys doing this evening? Uh, Great. It's great to be here. Nice. Great to have you. Um, Yeah, so today on the show, we're going to be talking, we're going to be doing a double review like we have been recently. Um, We're going to be reviewing BJ Novak's directorial debut, Vengeance, and the new Dan Trachtenberg movie that is hitting Hulu this week, Prey. Um, So we're going to, as we normally do, we're going to do a non-spoiler review for each movie. And then once we get into spoilers, I'll play a clip from the trailer and I'll put timestamps and everything um, in that. But before we get to all that, I just want to ask, like, what's new with you guys? How have you guys been? And uh, what what's kind of new in terms of movies for you? Go ahead. Andy. <laughs> um, Go first. <laughs> well, you know, we are uh, kind of we've crested the summer, you know, smash of movies mm-hmm. and we're kind of heading into that always interesting August wave of like semi I don't know if it's like a B team blockbuster <laughs> wave or what, but um it's always an interesting period because there's always movies that surprise me in like August September um like vengeance which we'll get to in a little bit um and then there's movies like prey um (laughs) where it's it's a movie and it came out and yay yeah but no um things are going well i it's been an interesting summer if not a super exciting one Mm -hmm. movie wise but Mm -hmm. um yeah I, i i think we're in uh kind of a quiet but fun spot as we look ahead to some some interesting releases up ahead <laughs> yeah absolutely joe yeah. how has your uh summer in movies been yeah it's it's been okay it, honestly it's been a little slow i've i've um mm. i've been on sort of a tv binge the last couple oh, of months nice uh, and i'm i'm kind of just catching it uh, kind of ca- getting back into the groove with movies mm-hmm. uh you know I, i've done these and you know just a handful of things um, I, I have a, a, another gig on uh, another podcast called Medium Cool, a movie mm-hmm. podcast, and um, we don't always do new movies there. So, yeah. you know, I, I've watched some, you know, some older movies and, um, you know, done a little bit of that. But, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of catching up. Uh, you know, of course, I've seen most of the big ones uh, at this point. But, um, yeah, it, it's fun to kind of jump back in now and, and uh, uh, you know, get off of episodic TV a little bit and go back into the, the cinema. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to jump back into it. 
Nice. And uh, to just shout out Medium Cool, uh, today they actually uh, released an episode with a friend of the show and our friend Sam Watermeyer uh, Mm -hmm. talking about Kubrick. And even though Sam had some uh, playfully incendiary things to say about Stephen King, (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was a really good episode. I, I recommend everyone check it out. We'll punch um, him later. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, since we, since this is your first time on the on the podcast, Joe, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your history and like what, uh, like what makes you uh, into movies? What what movies you're into? And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and also what TV you're into as well? <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's a big question. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I so I've been. Um, I have, let me say it like this. I've written movie reviews since 2004 in a, in a, nice. what I would call a professional way. I, I mm-hmm. used to write for a, a magazine called Intake that was in, uh, uh, here in Indianapolis that the Indianapolis Star put out. Um, and it went through various iterations and I kind of stuck along there for four years. I was their kind of the primary quote unquote critic. I was a very young mm-hmm. guy and, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I had a, um, a great time doing sort of a dream gig. Um, I, I'm actually one of the co-founders of the film Yap, um, you know, nice. who, who uh, Andy writes for now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you know, I was with them for about a decade, and um, uh, you know, more recently, of course, I've been on Midwest Film Journal and mm-hmm. um, and now in Medium Cool, um, a movie podcast, uh, among other things. Um, I've been I've been a, a movie lover since I was six years old. Um, nice. uh, you know, Sam and and some of our other buddies, you know, are, are always giving me a hard time about the. Uh, the the very graphic movies I saw at a very inappropriate age. So, you know, I was I was watching the Friday the Thirteenth movies, uh, you know, seeing them in theaters when I was six and seven years old. And, oh, that's awesome! Uh, you know, my my tenth birthday was a. I don't remember if I can remember all of the movies that I saw, but among them I saw um, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the first time. Oh, um, I saw a movie called Beyond the Darkness, which we've um, we have we covered in our. Uh, buddy film festival uh that you know that we, we've recently pulled you guys in on yeah. and um there was another one chopping mall i think was the third one that particular nice. night um so uh th- those are three very i mean well especially beyond the darkness is a bizarre movie if you've ever seen it um but uh you know I, i've been into horror movies and such you know from that age and you know my love for cinema grew obviously through my entire life um nice. you know i could go i could tell you story upon story about you know things <laughs> but let's, let's move into these movies maybe and uh uh you know and we could save that for a different time hell yeah awesome <laughs> that's that's awesome yeah um <laughs> uh so yeah so like i said we're going to be reviewing vengeance and prey uh vengeance is currently out in theaters and are you guys ready to dive into these movies let's go hell yeah all right awesome well like i said we're going to be doing a non-spoiler review and then we'll do spoiler a spoiler section timestamps for show notes all that stuff so uh first up tonight we're going to be talking about vengeance and uh yeah so the premise uh per imdb is a radio host from new york city attempts to solve the murder of a girl he hooked up with and travels down south to investigate the circumstances of her death and discover what happened to her uh, the movie was is the uh, directorial debut of writer director B J Novak um, of Office fame. Uh, it stars B J Novak, Boyd Holbrook, uh, Dove Cameron, Issa Rae, and Ashton Kutcher. It was released in theaters on July 29th. And uh, uh, if you guys are interested in Patreon, I did an immediate reaction recording uh, for the two dollar and above patrons. That was like 21 minutes. Um, and I just kind of rambled my feelings on it. So, uh, gentlemen, vengeance, um, what were your expectations going into it and kind of in broad non-spoiler terms, what did you think of the movie overall? And then we can kind of get in the weeds about it. Um, I went into this movie, uh, after, after seeing the trailers, it had kind of given me the vibes of like, uh, the the hunt that controversial movie from like yeah. two or three years ago um that uh i believe got like pulled from theaters and then mm. put back into theaters a year later because it was just so scandalous and then it ended up being just kind of a <laughs> mediocre movie um i expected better from this 
so I don't mean to compare them quality wise, but um, it, it gave me a similar energy in that it was like, kind of felt like it was taking a South Park approach of like, oh, we're going to make fun of everybody. We're going to lambast all sides of the political spectrum and make fun of, you know, dopey rednecks while also making fun of <laughs> soft liberals or whatever. And I was interested to see how BJ Novak um, would kind of navigate that landscape or wade into that political uh, spectrum. Cause I've liked, uh, you know, I think he wrote several episodes, a lot of episodes of the office um, oh, yeah. and was kind of a major producer on that. Um, so, you know, I knew he had a lot of, uh, both comedic and empathetic writing chops. And, uh, so I was, I was really looking forward to it, um, a little bit cautiously because of that sort of political dyna- dynamic it had going for it. But, uh, having seen it, I think it kind of smartly avoids doing that sort of South Park thing of just mm-hmm. attacking everybody or mocking everybody. And it's really a lot more earnest and, kind and empathetic than I expected. And it's less about like making fun of the differences in different cultures and more about uh, understanding one another and uh, kind of being willing to look inward to solve a problem rather than blaming those around you or the circumstances you're in. Um, I think he, BJ Novak gives a great performance in the lead. Mm -hmm. uh, And I think he's helped by, the entire ensemble. I think Boyd Holbrook is both hilarious and completely believable as the kind of um, initially portrayed uh, dopey older brother of yeah. the uh, the murder victim who they're trying to uh, investigate. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was funny and had a lot of heart and I enjoyed where the twists and turns of the mystery went. Um, I don't know it was maybe less, uh, I guess, politically charged than I expected, but it still has some of that, um, that in it, but in the end, it just ends up being more about kind of, you know, being better to your fellow man. And that's a good thing. That's always a good thing to be telling people. (laughs) (laughs) I I I agree. Nice. Joe, how about you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, in terms of my initial expectations, kind of the same, um, I, you know, I, I didn't have a strong, you know, this movie is you know, coming in without a lot of fanfare, so I didn't mm-hmm. have a strong opinion, you know, reaction to it. I actually didn't know that much about it um, until I, you know, I actually watched the trailer just a couple hours before I went and I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, and, you know, my my oldest son, especially, is a huge fan of The Office. I tried to get him to go with me and he was like, eh, nice. and I wish he had because, <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot to offer in, in this movie. Um, yeah, and, and Andy, your your comments I think are right on about kind of the the level of of um, politics that he kind of inserts into here. Obviously, you know, uh, Ben uh, played by B.J. Novak is is a, a New York guy, and he's this you know kind of this podcaster and a writer, and he uh, you know he's going to this small town Texas, and I love how they uh, you know how they they identify where they're at you know because he's you know he's he's guessing (laughs) he gets this phone call and he's just guessing in in the middle of the night you know like (laughs) where are you at are you in your new austin and he's like that's not even texas (laughs) (laughs) and he's like dallas that's not texas either (laughs) yeah and it ends up being like outside of abilene yeah what did you say it was like five hours from abilene or something Something like that (laughs) yeah but yeah there's uh, you know the the writing I thought was was really pretty smart, and nice. um, you, you know uh, uh, Novak did a great job of not presenting this one sided you know yeah. country bumpkins are terrible kind of thing. Uh, you know even as he's you know kind of subtly you know poking at them, taking jabs at them here yeah. and there. He doesn't mm-hmm. um, you know he kind of allows that to grow and allows those characters to be more than just that you know, that those stereotypes, those archetypes of, you know, backwoods, backward people, yeah. and, and kind of gives them all um, kind of real motivations and real, you know, real character beats. And, uh, you, you know, and you mentioned Boyd Holbrook, who, you know, obviously was terrific as well. But, mm-hmm. you know, I really love Dove Cameron and, and Isabella Amara as um, mm-hmm. the the deceased uh, Ab- Abby, who, by the way, her name was Abilene. 
in the movie. And then um, her sisters are named Paris and Kansas City. <laughs> yes. Which I thought was really funny. A really funny thing that they didn't even really bring up. Didn't in the bring movie. attention just, to. Yeah, kind of let yeah. it slide for you to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. And it was, I really, I really loved every time they were on screen, mm. you know, and, and I, I didn't know what to expect when they first came in. Cause you know, they're these, they're obviously much younger than, than, uh, than Ben, mm -hmm. but they're also, you know, kind of young, cute, single girls that are, you know, are, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'm like, this could get really uncomfortable, <laughs> but it, it really didn't. And I was, I was kind of glad to see the way that it, it played out because it, it didn't turn where it very easily could have, which was to have them as some sort, either have them as, you know, fawning over him or mm. have him, you know, even, even worse, having him actually pursuing them in a romantic way. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, he didn't go for that low hanging fruit and, and right. allowed it to, to play out in a better way. Yeah. I agree. And so, so I was kind of not really that, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that I wasn't interested in the movie. I saw the trailer a couple times in theaters and I thought like, oh yeah, this is, this looks like it could be interesting. Um, the biggest thing was that, was that I was like, oh, oh, he's doing a podcast. Okay. And like, I'm like seeing like, oh, okay. He's using this, this recorder, this interface and everything. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get all excited about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but as, as hey, not every white guy needs a podcast, know. you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> line from the movie that I wrote down <laughs> as I was watching. <laughs> nice. Yep. <laughs> uh, which I, I felt attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I've been doing this for a while. I, I feel like I'm grandfathered in, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but it was, uh, but yeah, it was very, I was very surprised at how much I kind of fell in love with the movie because it is like you guys said it is not really taking it's not taking a a sharp like knife to like you know the kind of country bumpkin or or just really texas way of life um instead it's really it's really exploring this fish out of water aspect of it while also having Ben be a character who is learning about himself and realizing that like, Oh, maybe the way he treats people is not the best way to treat people. <laughs> and mm -hmm. like, there's that moment where he's looking over his text messages with, with Abby um, in like, it's really pretty heartfelt and kind of touching. Cause like you see, mm -hmm. Like she, her saying like, oh, check out my music and, and have you did this? Oh, your Wi-Fi is really spotty and everything. And I'm just like, oh, wow. Okay. He's like, this is him learning like how to be a better person and everything. And yeah. as hackneyed as that sounds, but, mm -hmm. um, but then, I mean, it was so much so that like that aspect of the movie was more interesting to me than like the mystery of it. And I think that that's kind of intentional, but I just, I was really just floored by it. And the, we'll talk in more specifics and spoilers, but the kind of avenues that the movie goes down, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk in spoilers because there's something to the ending that I'm just like, I'm not really fully like connecting with, but yeah. everything up to that point, I'm like, this is, this is a very strong, um, uh, debut for BJ Novak as a feature writer and director. Um, it's just, it's, it was really good. <laughs> I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, how did you guys feel about that kind of fish out of water, water aspect? If you, if we want to kind of dive into that a little bit more. Um, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll go first this time, I guess, just because you did before. You know, I, I think I, maybe I said more, um, you know, I, I, I ran off at the mouth a bit more, but um, no, I, yeah, I liked the fish out of water aspect, which is obviously kind of the, the through line of the movie. That's mm -hmm. where, you know, kind of where we're starting is, you know, he, he's been as in his, his element, obviously in New York. And we see that scene at the beginning of him. Um, and, and who was that with him? I, I, I want to look. I thought it was John Mayer. Like, is that John oh, Mayer? Yeah. It was John Mayer. It was John Mayer. <laughs> he, he is not listed even in the cat. Well, I'm looking at the top. That's cat. right. I saw that in the credits. And I remember that yeah. BJ Novak did an AMA on Reddit. Mm -hmm. And like he, like someone had asked like, oh, what was the inspiration for the movie? And he said, oh, it just kind of came from hanging out with John Mayer for a while. And I was like, wait, wait, what? 
Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah, there he is right there in the in the credit. If you look in the full credits, he's in there mm, playing yeah. John. Well, John is his character's name. Um, <laughs> yeah, so th- they're basically sitting there being douchey, and they're yeah. you know they're having all of these profound qu- conversations that they don't have really anything profound to say. Actually, right. you know they're they're profound in the way that that twenty somethings think that they're profound i guess yeah but um (laughs) you know it it kind of showed a lot of who he was and then he gets you know gets to texas and he it's very clear he has no idea how to function even down to the 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 part where you know they're at the rodeo and and the and the announcer's like who loves the university of texas and the other person that that cheers thinking it's you know it's a you know it's a cheap way to get some uh some people on his side and everybody's like what we like texas (laughs) tech here (laughs) So, um, yeah, oh, so yeah. That, you know, that's, that was fun. And, and it was fun how it, you know, segued past that, I think. And, mm-hmm. and as you said, got to, got to something a little bit deeper. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, I thought, I thought that part was pretty effective. Sweet. Yeah. Andy. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I mean, the, like the fish out of water dynamic, um, as like a comedic device can be very, I mean, it's just used a lot. And so it can be very tiresome sometimes, um, or just overdone or rehashed from other movies. But this, I, ne- I never, I never felt that way about this. I, I was genuinely entertained by all of the kind of contrasting his lifestyle with their, with the Texan lifestyle. Yeah. And th- there's a good balance of like, especially in that first half of like uh, Ben gets to kind of give it to them at the same time that they're giving it back to him. Yeah. And he might be the butt of the joke more often than not, but still there's like a good balance of, you know, everybody's trying to figure stuff out and not, not, nobody's on the same page. And um, there's just a lot of good, a lot of good bits there. Um, and I think the other thing that helps is, Um, while I agree with, uh, what you said earlier, Matt, about maybe by the end, not being as interested in the, the mystery storyline as Mm -hmm. I was kind of Ben's development. Mm -hmm. I think the mystery really helps early on in the movie kind of carry you through in case the fish out of water stuff starts to get stale or repetitive. You're kind of pulled along by, by these very different characters trying to figure out this uh mystery in different ways and so there's kind of a good push and pull uh between the the um drama of the mystery and the comedy of the uh uh, fish out of water stuff and also the kind of emotional um you know inner growth that ben's experiencing yeah yeah i that's that's well said um the uh, oh god, I completely lost my train of thought because I got distracted. But um, <laughs> uh, oh well, I, I was gonna say that mm-hmm. the the fish out of water part honestly is kind of the easy part. Mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's the, it, you know the that that story obviously has been done you know a million times in movies. Yeah, and 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 the mystery part too, honestly, and mm-hmm. and even I mean, honestly, all of these have been done. It's you know all, if you go all of the various little angles and aspects, but uh, I think it's the way that they they all you know they you know BJ Novak kind of pulls them all together, yeah, uh, right. and, and mixes them you know kind of tosses them in a blender and, and sort of a, and to use that uh, a poor analogy and it, but he does it in the best way it, it comes out really well mm-hmm. uh, because there's never there's never too much there's never a moment where I feel like they're playing the fish out of water aspect as just a slap sticky or, or stupid, you right. know, right. He's not, he's not stomping through, you know, cow pies or something. Yeah. You know, they're in, in a lesser movie at the, the rodeo, he would have been in the rodeo, you know, that it would have been stuff like that. Yeah. Where here they, you know, they, they let it feel a little more natural and real where he's a spectator and, you know, he, he, he does end up like on the microphone at one mm-hmm. point, but, you know, he's not participating. There's no bulls charging at him, right. you know, or anything ridiculous like that. So, um, you know, and, and I do think, I do think the, the mystery part gets a little more real. Obviously we mm. want to be careful not to say, you know, yeah. That I, I feel like it, it kind of, it kind of approaches becoming too much if, if anything in this movie does, but sure. um, yeah. it, you know, it's, they're, they're all, they, they have that restraint, mm-hmm. you know, while it, it's still, it's still funny and it's still, is you know but it's effective you know as well and it, and it all feels like it feels like a real vacation or you know 
anti-vacation that someone right. <laughs> might have, this person <laughs> might actually have. Yeah. yeah. Um, I agree. And, and there is a level to kind of the balance of, um, the, the mystery and what he's trying to say that like, there's the movie kind of is painting these two separate pictures or these two pictures of these two very separate lifestyles or, or what have you cultures basically. And, um, it's doing so in a very direct and in your face way without being, condescending or being um very kind of beating you over the head with it like it's very it's very obvious it's very surface level but when we see it, it, there's a natural aspect to it that feels like it's just very much like yeah this is how these people would interact and then when you kind of filter it or when he puts it through that filter of doing like a podcast and producing it and trying to do a um uh, kind of this American life kind of story and like go all journalist on it and everything. I was watching and I was like, I'm kind of into that. Like, like this whole idea of him pursuing the story as this pursuit of vengeance as a myth that, you know, the American person like creates to not, not face the realities of like the op opioid crisis and everything. I'm like, Oh yeah, I would listen to the hell out of that. <laughs> like as a as a, a white liberal douche in his 30s, I would eat that up. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, but it goes to some really interesting places and I wanted to highlight Ashton Kutcher's performance because mm -hmm. the movie kind of subverts your expectations and and I love the way that it does that because Ben is going to the recording studio. Ashton Kutcher is, he's kind of a lead as to like what, uh, like someone in, in Abilene's life. And he goes and like, he says, I can't remember what he says to in the recording, but he's like, I'm going to this, uh, recording studio where they said that they've been making records since 2018. And so maybe if you can play like <laughs> Benny Hill music or something here, uh that would be great and then it's like a very like legit kind of operation so i don't know how did you feel about ashton kutcher and really the cast as well the the rest of the cast that we haven't touched on uh yeah i mean ashton kutcher was awesome i feel like i mean we don't see him that much anymore because right. he's he's been kind of more involved in his uh various um you know uh, political pursuits and mm -hmm. i don't mean like running for office or anything but right. he's he's very involved in a lot of social causes and kind of focuses more on that stuff and so it's always interesting when he turns up in a movie or a tv show especially when he's kind of uh playing against his type yeah. um because here he's he's very much this sort of enigmatic cerebral record producer who's mm. like way smarter right out the gate than you would expect yeah. and it's not really a ruse like he it, he just is that and he's very thoughtful um and of course there's more to his character as the story goes mm -hmm. on which we can get to in spoilers but um i think i i just think um ashton kutcher did a really good job kind of relaxing into that character and being this very chill but intelligent mm -hmm. and believable even though he feels like he has all the answers kind of character yeah uh, and yeah and i mean the the rest of the cast is great too i like that you guys touched on the uh abilene's two sisters because they were mm -hmm. um i kind of expected to be an afterthought and then they were yeah. a really fun part of the movie um the mom too um the actress's name is escaping uh, me yeah um, but she, she was great. Um, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I pretty much loved everybody in this movie. I mean, even when it would, I kind of expected the, uh, kind of cutting back and forth to Issa Rae, the, mm -hmm. uh, podcast editor. I kind of expected that to become a little bit of a slog at a certain point, kind of yeah. as you get more invested in the Texas stuff, you get less interested in the podcast bureaucracy but mm -hmm. every time we come back to her uh, she, i mean she's really charming on screen and has a great presence oh, and yeah. i think she and uh 
um, BJ Novak have a really good kind of back and forth banter through the phone, which yeah. keeps it fun. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was uh Jay Smith Cameron plays the nice. mom. I just looked her oh, up okay. while you were talking. Nice. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah. She's um, yeah, she was, she was very good. It, that, that is what was fun again to me was how it would have been easy. Number one for Ashton Kutcher's character to be, showier to be owen wilson and meet the parents for example you know just like oh yeah this kind of very flashy showy character that was just there and you know therefore a you know here's random famous person giving my movie some credibility but you know <laughs> his 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 role obviously ends up being a little meatier than that and um yeah and, and then these other characters who again in another movie would have just Fall, like you said, fallen back into the background and maybe they, they would have disappeared for a long time and then pop back in for some sort of joke. And here they're all, they're all in and they all have their little individual uh, feelings about, obviously these are all, these are all people who are close to, uh, to Abilene and are, um, you know, who are profoundly sad at her, her death. And, you know, we don't have, again, we don't have this just like silly slapsticky stuff necessarily. Yeah. The, 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 the sister's yeah. reactions, for example, felt very real. And, you know, what, how, you know, someone whose sister, who I think she was older, I'm, I, yeah, she was the older of them and she had mm-hmm. been away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like this, this all makes sense. So um, it, it all kind of, it all felt at least plausibly real that, you know, this is the reaction that they would be having. It wouldn't just be like, oh, we're sad for a scene and now we're going to be, you know, ridiculous and over the top. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, you know, it, it it was it was all very good. Yeah, and and Andy, uh, you mentioned Issa Rae, and and her scenes were were terrific. She did it was so great the things that she did. It, mm-hmm. You know, she kind of pushed the the movie along because you know Ben has to report into her, and mm-hmm. you know she offers these little you know hints and tweaks for him. And uh, it was funny because I was I was sitting here and I was kind of you know as Andy was talking a minute ago, I was going mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I remembered the things she said to Ben where she's like you're stepping on the interviewer <laughs> and, and he was like, what? And she's like, quit saying, uh-huh. And, and yes. And interrupting them and talking over it. And I was like, I was like, Oh, I do that. I've interviewed many people. And every time I, I've constantly done that. Right. <laughs> so, and yeah. So that, you know, that was, that was great. Um, you know, the, just this movie has a lot of those little moments like that where, Oh yeah. You, you know, you can learn something about podcasts and mm-hmm. and learn how to be a real live journalist when you're in a podcast. So go, go figure. Who knew? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I had so like, again, I because I'm I'm just ridiculous because like I've been I've been podcasting for nine years now. Uh-huh. And like any time <laughs> this started as like a joke, but. Anytime, like, uh, when Issa Rae is on the phone with, with BJ Novak and she says like, oh, I'll overnight you the equipment and everything. Like I saw it with my girlfriend, Jess, and I was like squeezing her hand. Like, here it is. We're going to see, we're going to see the recorder. We're going to see what, what he's using and everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> he has equipment and it's like, oh, no. yeah. By the way, uh, zoom H4N pro, I think. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> nerd yeah um, <laughs> but no i really i i really enjoyed that aspect of it too that mm-hmm. kind of whole production aspect to it and it just yeah. felt very authentic um mm-hmm. and everything even though it's wildly different than anything i've done but um yeah yeah and oh oh the thing that i really kind of like i, I found it to be so interesting is the the first line that Ashton Kutcher our, our introduction to Ashton Kutcher's character is he's in a studio he is listening to he's he's recording a, a he's having studio time with a singer and she's just kind of lifeless and not doing much and then he goes on this whole thing that <laughs> By all accounts, it should feel like just absolute blowhard bullshit. But I'm like listening to it. He's talking about how like, you know, whether or not you believe in God, no matter what, Big Bang or or Let There Be Light, uh, the world began with sound, with music. And when we're we're recording records, it's not even though we're not recording records, we're scratching our existence on the record of the universe. And I'm like, that's right. 
yes <laughs> you're absolutely yes yeah. um, and it works too right like it, she, it yeah. does but then, and then they were, but what I love about that is the lyrics of the song are just like oh, I'm doing a shift at the Piggly Wiggly or whatever yeah. and it's like so, so mundane it's so it's like, perfect yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the comedy in this movie was absolutely just right up my alley. There's an amazing, I don't want to spoil what it is exactly, but there's an amazing Liam Neeson joke that I was just like caught so off guard (laughs) by. I thought that was fantastic. I love that joke. Yeah. It's Uh so good. Uh, So good. Um, Yeah. So is there anything else we should discuss in non-spoiler or would you guys want to just dive into spoilers for vengeance? So yeah. we can dive in. Yeah, yeah, I think it, yeah, I think we've exhausted it. This morning. Nice, I think so too. Um, before we get into spoilers, of course, I'm going to play a clip from the trailer to kind of uh, break it up here. But before we before we go into spoilers, uh, for those who aren't going to listen to that, what is our letterbox rating for Vengeance? Um, I start. I'll start. I gave it four stars and a little heart. So, what did you guys rate it on Letterboxd? Yeah, I I gave it a solid four stars. Yeah, I nice. I I really enjoyed it. Um, it it's it, you know again in a movie where in a year where I haven't seen as many movies as maybe I have in the past. Um, it's the best movie I've seen so far this year. Nice. Um, I, I don't I don't I don't necessarily anticipate it remaining that way, but it it could be a dark horse kind of for my top ten. I think at this point. Um, Sweet. It, I think in the, in the the final analysis, but it it's ve- it's a very strong movie and yeah and and B J Novak as as um. You know he's he's proven himself absolutely on television, and and mm-hmm. I think this is a, a really great start in in movies too. Sweet, nice, Andy. How about you? Yeah, to uh, drive home how much the three of us agree, I rated it four stars as well. Nice, really like this movie a lot. Nice, awesome. Uh, all right, great. Well, we are going to go into spoilers for Vengeance. Um, if you want to skip ahead, check the show notes for timestamps. But I'm going to go ahead and play a clip from the trailer. Once we come back, we will be spoiling Vengeance. So here we go. Evelyn just didn't die. She was murdered. What? And the two of us are going to avenge her death. So as like a personal boundary, I don't avenge deaths. But here's what I can do. I'm going to record everything that you think happened to Abilene. And we'll put it on a podcast, and we'll see where it leads. What evidence does he have that it was a murder? Nothing. And that's the story. What's this podcast about? A new American reality where people invent these conspiracies. You got deep state, pill pushers, cartels, the law. Because the truth is too hard to accept. All right, so spoilers on for vengeance. Um, where shall we begin, um, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was funny that that's one of the things that just hit me just now was that we we didn't really even explore that that um, that idea of of um, Ty wanting to uh, or insisting that she was murdered when yeah. all signs point to an accident, you know, and. Right. Um, but I mean, I guess where where I would want to start would be um, kind of going off of that, which was the um, one of the the big things that Ashton Kutcher's character mentioned in this first that first scene that he's in was when he you know he's like oh you know you think these are all stupid people here and that they're not they're yeah. they're actually very smart there's just nothing going on here so the conspiracy theories grow out of that and I was like that's that's really kind of an uh, an interesting insight to have. Yeah. Uh, again, that was one of those first bits where you're, you know, where you're not, where you're realizing that, you know, we're not just dealing with a bunch of imbeciles. You know, these are yeah. people who uh, have grown up at, as, you know, as, you know, politically speaking, you know, we, we talk about the, the backgrounds and upbringing of certain groups. And, mm-hmm. and this is another group that we just don't tend to, to do that to a whole lot. And, and yeah. it, it makes perfect sense to me. Mm-hmm. yeah absolutely um yeah yeah the there was also this recurring line throughout it about abilene that i i i thought it was interesting like they kept saying like oh she never even took so much as an advil and like it popped mm-hmm. up like three times and then it's revealed like toward the end or in, in the third yeah. act it's like oh wait she was a real big pill head and i love yeah. the casualness of that <laughs> from the grandmother 
Um, but I also really, I think that that's really smart the way that that's kind of unveiled just because it's at that point, Ben has kind of assimilated himself in with the family and he's been accepted and it is just this casual, like family dynamic. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, but anyway, how did you feel? Let's, let's talk about the kind Mm -hmm. of the everything, (laughs) uh, with that, (laughs) I guess. Yeah. I don't, I've got nothing. (laughs) uh yeah um with the pill stuff um yeah yeah, well i i I thought the um the way they kind of uh, unfolded who abilene is to Mm -hmm. us as the viewers since we don't know her at all and ben barely knew her and so Mm -hmm. the whole movie is kind of figuring out who she was as well as what happened to her Mm -hmm. um i thought that was really cool and the the uh kind of the sort of revealing thing about that scene where the grandma is like, ah, she's a massive pill popper. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a nice scene. I mean, obviously it's kind of a turning point where in the emotional drama where Ben then, okay, goes back to sort of doubting all these people and that sort of thing. But I thought it was a cool moment in the, like you said, he had been kind of assimilated into this family. He'd gotten comfortable with them and began to sort of see their perspective on things. And then sort of like the moment that, you know, artifice of calm and comfort and understanding is shattered. He's like immediately back to uh, Ben at the start of the movie, you yeah. know, kind of, I, you know, these people are stupid and I, they don't know anything and they make up stories. And it, that was just a nice little like, you know, he's getting there, but he hasn't really figured it out type of moment, you know, yeah. and he needs that kind of final push to really get where he's, where he's going to go as a character. Um, and so I thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, I liked, I really liked, I almost wish, I do wish there were more scenes of Ben kind of figuring out who Abilene was as a person. Yeah. Um, but I really liked all those scenes, like the scenes where he finds the little clips of her singing or talking about something. And, uh, it is a very minor gripe. Um, Mm -hmm. but it always felt like those scenes got cut a little bit short by some other character coming into the room, you know, little brother or whatever, just walking in being like, Hey, what's up? It's like, no, I wanted to, wanted to hear more. But I think part of that too is, you know, that sort of drives home how, how much of a, I guess, missed opportunity that was for Ben to get to really Mm -hmm. get to know somebody. And he missed that chance because he was a selfish asshole. Yeah. So, and so he's never really going to have the full picture of who she is. Um, Yeah. yeah. So maybe that, that was intentional, but I would have liked to see a few more moments like that, but I liked all the moments we got. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Me too. The, the big, um, yeah, I I mean, I agree with you about that, uh, obviously about him, about kind of needing more. And and I think where, what kind of holds this movie back just a little bit is, I think is that, I don't know if it was editing or writing or, but there, there's a, a big leap from that point to the, the movie's climax. And mm-hmm. it, it kind of goes off in a way, it kind of goes off to a degree that I didn't really expect it to, to where, you know, that, that inciting moment at the end was just like, Whoa, wait a minute. And, you know, it, it didn't quite feel earned. It, you know, if, mm-hmm. if he had, if he had spent a little more time getting to know her, like you said, even through those, even through his own memories, even if mm-hmm. he, had, you know, we yeah. don't even have his own memory of what it is. Like he very vaguely remembers her. If he had remembered a couple of more, um, you know, tidbits, even if they had just done one of those like silly, cheesy things where like, you know, he imagined, he remembers like what her smile looks like, like just the yeah. thing that attracted him to yeah. her initially that, you know, it, it could have, made a little bit of a difference and it almost didn't feel earned when he finally took the shot, so to speak at the end. But, but, um, but in terms of that reveal too, yeah, you're right. It it was also very, very well done. Mm -hmm. Um, It it was a family secret, you know, sort of a family secret that everybody knew, but they didn't tell the outside world. So they, you know, they're portraying her as this, you know, she's angelic and, you know, Oh, we lost our little angel. And, and it's like, well, obviously she had a couple of little skeletons like everybody. And, mm-hmm. and and that's another thing that this movie kind of does as well is that, you know, uh, Ben is this character that's, you know, he's obviously the protagonist and he, ha- but you know, and he's smart and he's intelligent, but 
you know, emotionally he's very lacking. And, Mm -hmm. and that's, that's the thing that we see there is, you know, we see that missing in him and, you know, we, we kind of see that throughout. And that's one of the things with, with the family, so to speak, is that, you know, they're welcoming and inviting in the way that, that Southern folk tend to be, but they also have this other little bit that they're missing as well. (laughs) So, you know, um, yeah. In, in their own little secrets and in the, 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 even the corruption that they talk about, mm-hmm. the, you know, the cops sweeping things under the rug, it, it comes off as folksy and, mm-hmm. and charming at the beginning where it's like, Oh, those two lazy asses, you know, yeah. you know yeah. Mike and Dan, I think he's like, we got, yeah. we don't have the cops. We have Mike and Dan, you know, and they're like, they're, what is it? They're lazy as hell. You know? And, <laughs> yeah. and then you see them and they, and they are, but then, you're, mm-hmm. but then you're like, you see the runaround he gets, when he's trying to, you know, find out just whose jurisdiction it is. And it's like, they're using that to their advantage. So they don't Mm -hmm. have to, you know, put forth the effort and everybody does it, you know, you know, it's like, Oh, that's County. Oh, that's state. And then Mm -hmm. they're all just, you know, it's just the runaround basically. So they don't have to deal with something that's difficult to, to go after. Oh yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about the, about the realization that she wasn't what she was purported to be. And, Mm -hmm. The way that he he discovers that she uh, was basically lying to her family about him and mm-hmm. basically just saying that uh, Ashton Kutcher's character was the like was Ben and she had him in his phone as Ben, all that stuff. Um, and I kind of feel like that realization is it's a good twist. It's a good kind of way to really bring the mystery aspect to the forefront and bring us into the final act of the movie and and the the climax and everything. Mm -hmm. But my kind of disconnect is that it makes it, it feels like it shifts the movie from being more of an introspective kind of culture clash fish out of water story for BJ Novak and his character to grow and everything. And then it transitions into a more about like the public persona that we put out the the fame seeking kind of thing what social media does to us and all that like it, like um Ashton Kutcher's whole monologue at the end before he shot it's it's all about like you know we're going to make we're, we're going to be famous and everything and it kind of just feels like that doesn't really connect with me as hard as the the interpersonal stuff that he went through and I'm kind of trying to figure that out because I really love that social commentary and stuff, but it just feels like it's not abandoning his character growth, but it feels like it, I can't really rationalize it in my mind. Sure. Um, I I kind of felt a similar thing where it was kind of like in that kind of climactic confrontation between Ben and um, Ashton Kutcher um, <laughs> that, that yeah, I was like, this is a really interesting scene. I don't necessarily feel the connection to Ben's yeah. character, but it's yeah. an interesting scene. I think to go back to something Joe said, if we had gotten a little bit more of that visceral, like, oh, I need to know her, oh, I feel things for her kind of mm-hmm. moment from Ben, that could have propelled him into that moment where he uh, takes the shot. Um a little bit more naturally and make it feel like, okay, you know, he finally, uh, to put it in a really ham fisted way, he finally did get to know her and felt like he was driven to action as a result kind yeah. of thing. Um, so I think if there had been a little bit more of that, there would have been a better connection. Mm-hmm. I will say though, I think while a lot of what Ashton Kutcher's character is saying at the end is really interesting and, true even if it is mm-hmm. kind of overly cynical yeah i do also think that like part of that at least the way i read the scene was like he's he's blowing smoke and he's deflecting and mm-hmm. he's making all these kind of irrelevant points to try and justify what he did um which was you know r- ruin a girl's life yeah um and and uh I, I think, you know, then to for, for Ben's reaction to just be like, ah, I'm just going to shoot him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a, you know, cut the bullshit. Like mm-hmm. this isn't about some bigger 
issue with society or whatever you're just an asshole like you're just (laughs) a selfish prick who abused a young woman you know Mm -hmm. um so i kind of i get where you're coming from and i do kind Mm -hmm. of agree that there's a little bit of a disconnect but i also appreciated that it was kind of like a oh we're gonna try and insert this social commentary coming from the main villain and then you know punctuate it with a gunshot to the throat you know mm-hmm. like man eh, that's not what this is about <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there there was a, a bit of it, it is kind of a stand-in for you know things like roofing a girl and and raping her you know yeah. I, I kind of felt like to a degree that's you know it was it was sort of we're they were drawing parallels there anyway yeah yeah that you know it and i i would have liked for it to be I would have liked it to have been something I don't want to say stronger, but something more overt to, mm-hmm. to kind of tie them together um, than just, you know, Oh, look, there's another girl who, you know, had too much, too many drugs and he's going to drag her off and, and, and throw her in that little place again. Yeah. And, and I would have, I would have liked to have seen something more about like something again, a little more overt about the, the corruption there with the cops where maybe he had, actually talked to mike and dan yeah and they told him that if you take you know to to because it the the idea should needs to be that he's backed into a corner right like right he could have he could have gone to the cops with with the you know the the audio he had Mm -hmm. and it would have been pretty solid evidence but we didn't but while we get the sense that maybe they would have again swept it under the rug it would have been nice to have that last little bit where he's like, Oh, I mean, they know about it. Like they're, I, you know, we got like a hint early on where they were like, Oh yeah, I wasn't at that party either. Right. You know, kind of sarcastically, but it, it would have been nice for him to either, either he's making that connection or, or Quentin himself says it to him. He's like, Oh, they know about it. You know, like they, they're the ones that told me, you know, he's, you know, they told me to do it. Yeah. You know, something like that would have been, would have would have made it it would have punctuated i think it a little bit more and and made it a little more plausible to me that that ben is going to just shoot this guy and yeah. possibly you know risk his you know hit the you know his own autonomy for the rest of his life right to, you know to, again to uh, avenge the the death of this girl that he once had sex with you yeah. know it's like right. it, you i know, think it, yeah you know, go, go oh ahead, sorry go i ahead. was just gonna say i think that that's kind of my my disconnect with it is the leap that he makes to, oh, I'm just going to kill him. I, I just felt like that's, I mean, I, yeah, I I just feel like Ben as a character is maybe a little bit, I didn't get the sense that he was that instinctual. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, right. So yeah, so I, I don't know. But um, I just realized, like, by the way, we set a time, like, we're saying we're going to go this amount of time. I realized that we're getting close to that. So, uh, yeah, so uh, so kind of uh, we can kind of close out our review of Vengeance. Uh, overall, we liked it. Any any parting thoughts for spoilers before we kind of do a brief rundown of Prey? No, I, I don't think so. No. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, Vengeance is in theaters now. Um, I'm I'm very impressed by BJ Novak, and I'm yeah. very anxious to see what he does next because I think uh, he's really got some some uh, unique chops here. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now we're going to kind of do probably a brief um, <laughs> review of Prey. <laughs> I, uh, I, if it's if it's easier, I can always dip out when it's spoiler time. Oh, okay. Do the trailer cut. Okay. Yeah, yeah we can figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so Prey is uh coming out on who is it also gonna be on Disney Plus? Uh I, I think in the US it's just Hulu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay, yeah. So on Hulu this week, August fifth, they're uh, releasing *Prey*, uh, directed by Dan Trachtenberg, uh, written by Patrick Ayson, uh, starring Amber Midhunter, uh, Dane Deliagro, uh, Dakota Beavers, and Harlan Blaine. Uh, Kitwatat. I'm so sorry for butchering all of that, but uh, it is the latest movie in the Predator franchise. It's a prequel. The premise per IMDb is the origin story of the Pred... <clears throat> My voice just went completely out. <laughs> uh, the origin story of the Predator in the world of the Comanche Nation... 
300 years ago, Naru, a skilled female warrior, fights to protect her tribe against one of the first highly evolved predators to land on Earth. Um, again, this comes out on August 5th on Hulu. Gentlemen, what did you guys think of Prey, and what is your um, relationship with the Predator franchise um, leading up to Prey? Yeah, I I actually um, I actually enjoyed this movie quite a bit, a, a lot more than I thought, even as it was going along. Um, I, you know, I've I've been with the Predator franchise since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I especially the first two films. I'm I'm a you know I call myself a, a strong fan of um, the you know the the AVP movies and you know some of the more recent ones are, have been a little bit less. Uh, but the the thing that I liked about this, and and I'm you know I'm going to say this in in um the most loving way i can that this is sort of the hulu original version of predator and i mean that in a good way you know i so you know and this is this is a thing about a lot of movies a lot of franchises that we get bogged down in being bigger and better and the, mm-hmm. the latest newest shiny thing and there's if you have a, a rich world you can you can have a lot of these little stories this is such a little it's a very small simple story it has a couple of um, contemporary ideas, you know, obviously there's, uh, you know, the, the Native American aspect of it mm-hmm. is, is, you know, to some degree, I don't want to call it groundbreaking. That's probably a little strong, mm-hmm. but it's, it's <laughs> out of the ordinary and in, in sort of a good way. And, um, you know, it's, it's also a woman who's uh, kind of struggling to, to make it in a man's world and she's being dismissed. And, but that that's literally the story. That's, you know, the extent of the character development for most of them. Um, it's you know there are men who are the hunters and there's this woman who wants to be a hunter and she's pretty good at it she shows signs of being good at it like ah Mm -hmm. you're a girl go cook and (laughs) you know and she's like nope and she you know consistently in in a kind of a sort of a parallel to to alien almost the the original ridley scott alien film where she has the information that that no one else has and everyone else sort of dismisses her uh, to their to their peril <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. you know and leading to a, a showdown bet- obviously between her and uh and the beast so um you know i you know i i wrote down the line i wrote down um while i was watching this was this is the movie i wish brave had been the the pixar oh. movie several years back yeah and that that's a movie that i uh and, and sorry to uh to ramble a bit but uh, Brave is a movie that when I saw the the preview for it, the original preview, I thought, holy shit, this is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. It's just a girl out in the woods facing down a bear by herself. <laughs> and what the movie we got was so much not that. And that, yeah. that's literally what this movie is. And I was like, this is the movie I wanted Brave to be. I was ready. <laughs> you know, I was so disappointed it wasn't that. And this is, you know, a, a somewhat more science fiction version of, of that premise. And I, I think it works just fine. It's just a solid it's solid and workmanlike. It's it's low budget, mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it it does what it does relatively well, I think, for the most part. Nice, interesting. I kind of have a feeling that you might be the hottest on it with this with this review. Maybe. Not that, yeah. yeah, not that I didn't like it, but Andy, mm-hmm. how did you feel about Prey? Yeah, I, and and I may actually be in between you two here. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I I like the way you put it joe and that uh it is very um workmanlike and it's very much it it gives you kind of exactly what you think you're signing up for from the beginning you know it's predator versus native americans and it's a young woman trying to make her way through the world and Mm -hmm. and i think the best i don't want to say the best thing about it but the thing that really um, made it a positive experience for me as opposed to a more middling or negative experience um, is just how kind of stripped down it is. You know, there's not a lot of subplots about all the other people in her life or, you know, the different drama she's got going on or the, you know, the, the predator does not have a character arc or anything. He's the predator. Um, he's just the monster. Um, uh so it it moves very quickly and it stays focused the entire time, which makes it a really easily watchable movie. I had to watch this in two separate sittings just due to how my schedule worked out, which I really don't like to do. I don't like interrupting movies um, and, and picking them up later. So 
But when I, when I sat down the second time to watch it, I was just like, you know what, I'll just start over from the beginning and watch the whole thing. And like, I didn't mind that at all. It it didn't lose any watchability from having seen the first hour already. You know, it it just moves along really quickly. And I think, um, is it Amber mid thunder? Um, Uh, yes, she, she does a really great job. Um, I don't, she's not given a ton to work with, which I think maybe speaks even more to, to how good of a, a lead she is in this. Um, cause she, she really helps make, uh, Naru feel, um, you know, well-rounded, even though on paper, there's not a ton going on beyond the kind of, I want to be this and all the men around me are telling me I can't, which yeah. is, you know, totally valid, <laughs> um, but you know, not, not a super complex uh, thing to be working from. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the predator action stuff, I, they did a lot of really cool things and had the, the kind of predator do a lot of, have a, a lot of fun little moments. Um, but there was something with the, the editing of it where it was like the, predator would do something really cool and the camera would kind of like cut to a different angle of it right as he was doing it which would kind of yeah. take some of the oomph out of it um, yeah. i'm thinking of uh one where he like slices a dude's feet like legs off from under him and then pins him to a tree with a like a mall or something yeah. and it, like cuts right in the middle of it and it's like oh that was a really cool moment but i almost feel like i didn't really see all of it because you changed angle mid movement yeah um, so there, there were a lot of things where it was kind of like that. That was fun. I liked that they did that. I wish I could have seen it a little better or whatever. But um, they do have a lot of fun with the predator tech and stuff. So like, yeah. if you're if you're there just to see predator kill people in fun ways, you should be entertained. So mm-hmm. I, I had a good time with it. I wasn't over the moon about it or or anything like that. But um, I enjoyed the time I spent with it. Mm-hmm. Nice. I I kind of feel the same way um as you Andy. It it was it was perfectly fine. I didn't dislike the movie by any stretch. Um I think having Dan Trachtenberg at the helm made me more excited than I would have been had it just been just, you know, ex director here what have you. Mm-hmm. Um because I really like Dan Trachtenberg, but I kind of came to the realization that I, full disclosure, I've not seen Predator 2. I've seen Predator, uh, I've seen Predators, and I saw The Predator, and I think that's it. Um, And it's, like, Predators and The Predator, I, I couldn't really connect with. And I, it's a franchise that I want to enjoy, because that original movie is so great. I love it. And... The thing that I I kind of come away from it, kind of the the rationale that I have in my head, is that Predator is such an inherently 80s action movie, just kind of one-liner zingers. I mean, mm. like, any time, any time I... More often than not, basically, if I'm like being reintroduced to someone in my life or or I am I have any occasion to say this, I don't say it out loud because I don't want it to come across the wrong way. But like I always say in my head, like, like, oh, Joe Shearer, you son of a bitch. (laughs) Um, Like, I just can't like separate myself from that. And I kind of feel like the Predator franchise, what I've seen of it so far has lacked that kind of cheesy kind of action one-liner kind of thing which i think is more just indicative of action movies of the of that era but like Mm. when i knew that shane black was coming back for for the predator i was like oh okay he'll he'll infuse it with some more like fun stuff and it'll be back to that but it wasn't and with prey i appreciate the complete change up in the completely unique perspective and just that kind of pushing together of different uh technology for it like we have the predator like tech and then we have like arrows and spears and like muskets or whatever and i just loved that juxtaposition but at the end of the day i was just like okay this is a fun movie but i'm really not getting much of anything out of it and Mm -hmm. 
Maybe I'm not supposed to. Joe, I think that your <laughs> assessment that it is the Hulu original version of a Predator movie, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that is that is that is perfect. That is a perfect summation of it. And mm-hmm. I'm fine with it. But ultimately, it didn't really leave that big of an impression on me. Yeah. 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 The, I, I think that I think the biggest things the, there's a lot of implication kind of things. You know, there's mm-hmm. there are the, the the most fun stretch to me was when they meet the white people who, you know, uh, ostensibly, you know, they have the guns, the more advanced technology. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, ostensibly they're the white saviors again, but that, you know, again, that trope then gets turned on its head because Mm -hmm. they're very quickly slaughtered because they're, (laughs) you know, they, they have the, uh, it, it, you know, it brought up a whole slew of things to me. You know, Mm -hmm. if we, you know, we, we went back to, you know, talking about the politics of, of the previous movie we watched mm-hmm. going along with that here, you know, there's the, the gun control debate, you know, when you're saying, yeah. you know, that that's been a, a common refrain more recently is that, you know, the, the founding fathers shot single shot, you know, rifles, not, you know, semi-automatic guns. And, and that st- certainly stands out here. Yeah. If you, you know, if you juxtapose that with the original <laughs> predator, even where you know, right. it's, it's all of these oily, muscular soldiers in the, in the jungle sweating and, and looking cool while they're firing their machine guns here, they have these, <laughs> you know, these, these Frenchmen who were, I, I think they were French and they, yeah. they're, you know, they, they're like, Oh, I'll save you. And then they fire at the <laughs> predator. And then it's like, hold on, hold on. I got to put the powder in. I got to put yeah. this stuff. You know, I'm going to tamp it down. And now, you know, and then it's like, now they're dead. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, it's like, there's, you know, there's your, there's your political statement, you know, yeah. what, what there is of one. <laughs> um, and, and it was, it was, you know, that, that was a, a great little moment, but the, yeah, but you're right. Yeah. There, there's not a whole lot that's, that really stands out as, mm-hmm. you know, innovative or new or, you know, particularly interesting. There's, there's nothing flashy about this movie yeah. again. And that's, and, and yeah. And I think that, you know, I just, I just, my opinion of it, of, you know, this time around, it's just that that's fine. It doesn't yeah. have to necessarily, they, they kind of scale back a little bit, even, even with the the predator itself, the design of it is a little bit different than mm-hmm. in the other films. And it, it doesn't have that iconic, you know, futuristic looking high tech helmet. It has sort of a skull that it's adapted. Yeah. Um, I think it was the bear skull, um, even that it adapted into its, its helmet. And, you know, it still has the, you know, the, the little, the, the, three three you know, prong lasers thing. and it's got yeah. yeah and it's got it's got a, most of those kind of toys but that helmet is the the one thing that is a bit of a throwback as well so yeah. um I, I was i was kind of trying to discern what the because you don't get this is just the thing about all of those movies is that you don't get a whole lot about the background of you know the predators other yeah. than their uh, species that likes to hunt everything mm-hmm. and you know it, it's sort of a an alienish take on the most dangerous game you know where they're you know yeah. they're hunting human beings and it's like the ultimate prey versus the ultimate hunter and um it's a um yeah but we just don't get that much as far as the background because they don't talk you know we, we don't right. we've never been to the home world that i recall and we don't get a really good look at their society or you know how they develop their weapons or how you know the, and my thought was you know do they make their helmets based on what they have at hand? Did, you know, in the first one was the, the predator like forging its own helmet. Like, I don't, I don't understand necessarily what that is. Not that I need that necessarily, but it was something for me to think about because again, this movie has some downtime, you know, there's a lot of just walking around <laughs> yeah. the woods in this movie. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it allowed me oh, to yeah. wander. And I found, I just found myself kind of enjoying that, that it wasn't shoving everything in my face. It was kind of just letting me think about stuff a little bit. Nice. Well said. Um, yeah, I, I agree. We'll talk more in spoilers, but, um, I think if we can just jump to spoilers here, uh, we can go into detail. Andy, are you going to stick around or do you need to? Um, yeah, I should probably, I'm sorry about this, but I probably should, uh, head out. It's a busy night of recording for me. Yes. (laughs) Don't forget to give your rating. Yes. You're reading. Yes. Oh yes, I'll give my my parting thoughts, and then you guys can uh, rip apart the spoilers. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I I gave this uh, three stars and uh, threw it a, a little like a heart nice. on Letterboxd. Um, yeah, I, I had a good time with it. Um, I think 
the fun part about it for me is is kind of the yeah that juxtaposition of the older technology and older um, sort of ways of living and that sort of uh, closeness to to nature um, and and contrasting that with the the predator's love of the hunt. I loved seeing the predator hunt down other types of predators on earth like yeah. kind of working his way through the food chain of yeah. earth uh fighting a you know a bear and a coyote or wolf and you know then then fighting uh humans of course um so i thought that was a really fun parallel and uh yeah it's a solid time i'd, I'd say it's a fun you know rainy day sunday hulu watch mm-hmm. yeah well said. Um, and before you go, where can we find you online and your podcast and everything? Everything. Yeah. The uh, podcast is Odd Trilogies, uh, which is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, most of the major platforms. Um, our Twitter is at odd underscore trilogies, um, at odd trilogies, all one word on Instagram. Um and yeah, on, on Letterboxd, I am dandable, like mandible, but with a D instead of an M. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Andy. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. And uh, yeah. I hope your recording of Odd Trilogies goes well. <laughs> thank you. It was a blast <laughs> talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah. You too, man. See ya, Andy. See ya. All right. And we are going to go oh. into spoilers for... Prey. Um, I'm going to play a clip from the trailer, uh, and then when we come back, we're going to be spoiling Prey. Why do you want to hunt? Because you all think that I can't. I saw a sign in the sky. I'm ready. Muy nita. all right so spoilers on for prey which again is uh gonna be on hulu on august 5th uh i'm just thinking this is this is gonna be uh it's gonna be kind of short (laughs) it it is because like i was trying to think of that like I don't know how necessarily we can spoil it because yeah. I don't know. It, it The movie didn't really give me much to really latch on to. Like the relationship yeah. between her and her brother was mm-hmm. fine. And his yeah. like, not sacrifice, but his death was kind of like, kind of cool. But yeah, <laughs> ultimately but, but it was also yeah. sort of glossed. It didn't, it didn't have the impact necessarily that, right. that it could have. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a big problem with the kind of climactic fight with uh with the predator because yeah. it was it, like the nighttime shooting of it was just like I couldn't tell like I I felt like an old man. I was like, I can't tell what the hell's going on in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and like it kind of felt like this is your big climactic fight. Like, you know, do something a little bit more coherent, but yeah. I don't know. How did yeah, how yeah. did you feel about those aspects of the movie yeah it yeah the it didn't yeah it didn't bother me as much as as i thought it would the, the nighttime because i mm-hmm. i did see some of that nighttime stuff and i'll and i did kind of i was like oh this is kind of going to kind of be hard to see i hope they don't just do that stupid thing they, that usually happens and uh, because a yeah. lot of a lot of modern movies when there are nighttime shots it's it's a lot of cg and it yeah and it, it just turns into kind of shadows muddling around and it it just it tends to not look good but it it didn't bother me that much um and and again while i thought that i did think that i i enjoyed what they were i think what they were going for with the ending mm-hmm. that you know the the callback there you know there's i guess if we're spoiling it we're spoiling it right yeah. there's there's a, a sequence kind of toward the early middle of the movie where what's her name naru was mm-hmm. that her name she yeah. gets stuck in quicksand yeah and he's you know, and, and it's it's sort of a, a tense scene and but I I thought it was a terrific scene, you know, where she's she's got this um she's got her little tomahawk that she uses through the movie mm-hmm. and she thought to tie a rope to it and to you know to give her you know the ability to kind of you know she so she throws it and it sticks in trees and she kinda of yanks it back and it comes yeah. back to her. 
it you know it's sort of a, a boomerang effect it and it it keeps her from you know it, it makes her a badass throwing her her little tomahawk around but she also can get it right back so what's it's not like she's done once she throws it so anyway right so she's she's sinking in the quicksand and and she's trying to um use this contraption to to free her by throwing it at a log and try, you know she's just basically trying to get a stick mm-hmm. and it turns into this thing where just as her head is going under the quicksand she scores and she pulls herself out and she survives and you know and then of course that comes back at that comes back at the end when she's fighting the predator and she kind of lures yeah. it over there and gets it stuck and then she you know she takes him out that way so mm-hmm. um but it uh, i don't know it didn't quite score the way it could have you know it, yeah. it was sort of like a oh okay i see okay now it's done and yeah. you know and it's like okay that's how she wins and there you go but it it was a cool moment and it was a um like the the death was appropriately like whoa mm-hmm. but it didn't have i don't know there was something in in sort of the build up to that 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 left a little bit to de- be desired i thought yeah. uh, if i'm going to be critical of it at all yeah <laughs> um, so that you know that's where i could agree with you that it was a little bit you know it it missed a little bit at that point where yeah. that that could have been a super cool you know kick ass moment and it was yeah. pretty cool, but not, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was maybe, you know, I'm sitting on the couch. Maybe I'm like, yeah, I give it kind of a, a fist pump, right. I'm not gonna, like jump out of my seat, you know, kind of thing. So it, it was pretty, it, it just didn't quite score the way it, it, it could or should have, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. And I kind of feel like, This is a movie that I don't necessarily like, like I've said, I don't really have a problem with it at all. Like, Mm -hmm. unlike, unlike Vengeance, which I had like a slight kind of disconnect with the ending. This is a movie that I know what I'm getting into when I watch it. I know that it's going to be a unique take on the Predator kind of monster and it's going to be in in a unique setting, but I shouldn't really look for anything too much further from that. And that's kind of the that's kind of the balancing act that I'm trying to do with this movie. And yeah, I don't know. I just think, I think overall it was just okay. And I don't know how else we can really spoil it. Um, (laughs) Yeah. We've literally talked about the whole movie. I I know. (laughs) And it's like, I will say (laughs) when the uh, Frenchman or whoever they are, when they, when they popped up in the movie and like, I had the reaction that the movie I believe wanted me to have. And I thought like, like I wasn't looking for like any any depth to it or anything. I was just like, oh, these guys are gonna get massacred. This is gonna be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And like yeah. that's perfectly fine. Like that is a perfectly fine position to take with a movie like this. And yeah, I don't know. Um with this, as someone who who is a fan of the franchise. Do you want to see more in this style, in this era, in this kind of iteration of it? Or would you be okay with this being a one and done? Uh, You know, I feel like this is, I feel like if there's any franchise where you can do this, it's this one. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and maybe even, maybe the alien one, if we're, you know, if we're being perfectly honest, Um, you know, it's funny because I just had a, a flash of, the 80s uh the early 80s star wars tv movies where you know oh, they, yeah. they made a couple of ewoks the ewok um, TV ones. movies and yeah which i mean and they weren't particularly good mm-hmm. but it was it was a chance to sort of expand the universe and and i think that's i think that's where the predator franchise can kind of find itself mm-hmm. if it wants to you know if they if they want to continue it because you know, from a storytelling perspective, I don't know how much more there is, you know, just yeah. to, to, to one up itself, you know, the, the alien versus predator movies were to me were pretty lacking. Um, they, you know, they were fun video games and it was a fun, you know, what if like <laughs> in the Freddy versus Jason sort of way, Yeah, but it wasn't, but it didn't, it didn't even hit the way Freddy versus Jason hit to me. Right. Um, it, it was just, it wasn't, they tried to make the predators good guys. It'd mm. be nice to get, a bit more of a kind of a background into to the predator society. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something you could do in a setting like this um, rather than, you know, in a big budget sort of, you know, 
you know, big blowout movie that's going to cost a hundred million dollars or more to make. Right. I think you, if you have a few of these and you can explore that backstory and let it be canon, so to speak, um, you can, you know, and maybe you can build it out and build it up a bit and and make it back what it, you know, what it needs to be. Um, so, you know, and, and again, this was, it was no frills. It was low budget, but the, mm-hmm. the effects were fine the way they, you know, they, they handled the limitations and, um, the the invisibility mm. um, of the predator was was there, but it it didn't. Um, it was a little more visible still. Like we saw the yeah. camouflage that was still visible to us, um, you know, as opposed to the original predator, where where they use that more as a a device to um, to build tension. You know, mm-hmm. when you don't know where that where the monster is at. You know, it's it's just kind of around. But here you yeah. you see it a lot more. So. Uh, and I feel like, again, I feel like that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's not, it, this isn't, I don't think this is the, I don't know that the franchise has a future as, as a big budget, you know, blockbuster, you know, series of films. Right. But it can certainly do something like this, you know, once every couple of years and have, you know, <laughs> and, and make some, you know, make some money off of it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd be happy to see more in this in this franchise in this style yeah. in this in this mm-hmm. budget range. Um yeah, yeah I just yeah, yeah, I think And then maybe if they yeah. if they start to hit, maybe they, you know, they can go back to it. It's just mm-hmm. it's just hard when you're when you're resetting the protagonists of your film, you yeah. know, it, it it turns into a, a Jason thing. It turns into mm-hmm. a Friday the 13th where, you know, you're you're just it's a slasher movie at that point and yeah. how many times, you know, how many times can you do that? In, in this universe without you know when you have a the bad guy like that the the right. and again we're comparing it to the alien franchise that the alien the aliens have personality mm-hmm. you know it, at least yeah. um it, you know it, it's there's this kind of like bitchiness i guess about them <laughs> you know the, the aliens are always like you know yeah. they're they're you can you can read their cockiness even when it's cg or those you know the big puppets or whatever they yeah. use you can you can oh, yeah. read their arrogance, you know. Yep. You can't really do that with the predator, and, and so that's that's sort of a, a downfall. <laughs> that's that's a good point. It, the aliens, the xenomorphs, know that they're a perfect organism. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's yeah, oh yeah, and, and maybe that's what they need to do is let the predator <laughs> talk and then yeah. pick another one of these and give it a language. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's like listen, you <laughs> arrogant prick, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? but, um, oh, I love it. No, but um, you know we. Um, we I guess we could talk about the the uh, the language aspect where they yeah. you know they they use subtitles for a brief moment and then they mm-hmm. just kind of fell into speaking English and then yeah it kind of went on uh, you know I I always have a, a thing with that I, I don't mm-hmm. and it's not it's not a bad thing but to me the <clears throat> excuse me the the worst the worst of the those tropes when you're making mm-hmm. an American film or a, a movie that's in English starring people who are you know portraying people who are not american or or english or you know basically people who don't speak english right um it, it's kind of difficult you can either go the subtitle route if you want mm-hmm. or you can just have them speak and we have kind of traditionally done that with people using british accents or maybe yeah. you know german accents or something and and that's to me, you know, we go back to what was the movie that um, Tom Cruise was in where he played the oh, German uh, Valkyrie. He, like, yeah, yeah. And it was kind of a hullabaloo for a while. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of like, you know, we I kind of take a Star Trek approach to it and I mm-hmm. go, you know, they're just using a universal translator. The people who made this movie yeah. are using a translator. Like we we don't have to just hear them speak. I think it's Comanche in this case. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's fine if they're using that if they want to use it and just subtitle the whole thing, uh, okay. But there's going to be a lot of people who are like, "Well, I don't understand the movies with subtitles. Yeah. I can't read it." Ugh. And you know, I don't like to read my movies, and you know, I <laughs> obviously I hate that. But also, mm-hmm. I, I think it's fine if we just throw some English on there and be like, "Look, we're not going to do oh, the, yeah. the old kung fu movie thing and just dub this, right?" You know. And, and make it obvious but let's just pretend like they're speaking that language and we just understand it yeah the, the oh yeah with us not with them yeah i i always get kind of irritated a little bit when there is a certain level of a lack of um benefit of the doubt or lack mm-hmm. of um 
uh, what there's an expression I'm thinking of, but I can't think of it. Oh, suspension of disbelief. Like, okay, okay yeah. this is a movie about an alien that comes to the planet and is hunting people. And right. like, I, I don't get caught up on like, oh, they're speaking with like American, like it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't really, I, it's a weird kind of thing to kind of not be mm-hmm. able to check your brain there. Yeah. 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 There's a fine line. There's, a, yeah. there's certainly a fine line between, uh, you know, I, you know, I always say there should be internal consistency to some degree. Like, yeah. obviously we don't want the, the predator is not Spider-Man, you know, right. <laughs> we don't want him doing things that Spider-Man does, but yeah, you know, but if he's, you know, they're, they're pretty strong and they have these advanced weapons. So if they do something that's in line with that, then I'm going to, you know, maybe it's new or something, but yeah. I'm going to go along with it. But yeah, as, as long as the, as long as we're staying relatively consistent, yeah. it, it's, it's not, this is not Superman two we're doing where Superman <laughs> is disappearing and reappearing. Like this is not, you know, like doing things Superman doesn't do. Right. <clears throat> but um, it's, yeah. So I, I didn't have any problems with any of that. And and nice. I feel like that sometimes gets a little bit over overblown and overplayed mm-hmm. with, with people wanting to, wanting to pick on things like that. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Are you going to rewatch it in the Comanche language uh, setting when it, when it hits? Oh, um, Cause I think I they're know. doing that, I, right? I, I don't know. I hadn't heard that, but if, if they yeah. do, I might. Nice. Um, it, and this, and if any movie is translates to that, you know, lends mm-hmm. itself to that, it'd be this one because oh yeah, the dialogue's pretty spare. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't have. Um, yeah, if if there's any movie that would be a, a pretty good primer for for people who don't like subtitles, it would be this because oh yeah, there there are long stretches where she's just not talking, <laughs> right? You know, and she's the only one literally in frame. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Dan Trachtenberg had a tweet um, about that, but I do believe it is going to be. Um, oh yeah, okay. Um, from the Predator uh, Predator mm-hmm. Twitter account, Dan Trachtenberg um, quote tweeted this actually. Um, let me find it here. Yeah. This is. Perfect podcasting <laughs> audio. <laughs> well, I I do enjoy when they do those alternate versions of oh me too <laughs> of movies like that. You know, like the the Mist. They did the black and white version, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know, doing doing things like that, it, and that would again, this is a perfect movie to to do that, especially if someone wants to not be uh, a and stupid American saying that they can't stand to read their movies yeah if they want to uh yeah. you know introduce themselves and get used to the concept of of reading dialogue um you know which which by the way allows you the opportunity to watch a whole new world of movies and yep. expand your horizons in ways that you would have never thought yeah and you know experience a lot of really great things um you know, it that that's a, this is a perfect way to start, if, especially if you're a fan of of action movies like this and science oh, fiction. You know, science fiction slash horror stuff. It's you know, this is, um, you know, again, again, the dialogue is is not all that thick or yeah. complicated. You're not going to get confused by who's saying what. Right. It's just there's never more than two or three people I think in a frame at a given time. Yeah, <laughs> and most of the time there's just the one, and she's maybe talking to herself and maybe right. Not. Oh yeah. Um, but Dan Trachtenberg had said uh, the film was shot in both English and uh, English and Comanche for some sequences. However, on Hulu slash Disney Plus, there will be an option to watch the entire film dubbed in Comanche. Um, all the actors returned to voice this version as well. Um, so that's Very pretty cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's neat. Um, okay, so uh, do we have anything else on Prey? I mean, that's, that's, again, we've pretty much talked about the whole movie. Yeah, I think so too. (laughs) We went, we almost went beginning to end. Yeah, pretty much. Um, (laughs) uh, So overall rating, um, what did you rate this on Letterboxd? And I I think, I think I gave it four, I gave it four stars on Letterboxd, which is probably a little bit generous. Mm. It's probably, it's probably really, honestly, it's probably a three star, Mm. um, and you know maybe I maybe I could have given a three and a half. I probably was a little bit generous with a four. Sure. But um, uh, again, it, this is just a perfect to me, just a perfectly enjoyable, serviceable movie that yeah. that you'll watch, and then you won't. There's not a whole lot you're gonna remember about this movie. There's certainly mm-hmm. 
you know, they they call back a line. They call back that if it bleeds, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Line. Yeah. But they don't do a lot of. They don't do the silly, you know, you're one ugly motherfucker line. Right. Um. They don't, you know, they don't do ridiculous things. Mm-hmm. Um. This is just, you know, simple by the numbers, no frills kind of entertainment. And um, if you go into it watching that and don't expect it to to break new ground, you're going to be just fine. Yeah. That's well said, and that's basically where I laid down, uh, where I came down on it. Um, I rated it three stars, perfectly okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, if they make another one, sure, whatever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'll be there for it. Um, And and this again, this is is a decent anthology kind of thing. It's an episode. It's not... Yeah, it, it's not something I I want to I don't I don't care to see a sequel where she mm-hmm. fights another one or you know where uh, I don't know she's transported to the the future or something right. stupid. Oh yeah. Yeah, that this is just kind of a standalone maybe next time they go to the 1800s or uh, yeah. I don't know that it fights knights and you know yeah. in, in medieval England or something you know that Oh man. Would be you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just imagining see like that, feudal japan and fighting samurai like yeah. holy shit yep all right <laughs> yeah that, that could be fun that, yeah and, and again this is where we're at with mm-hmm. you know fanboys have the ability you know where we uh, you know i i remember back in high school and stuff where it's always like you know what a sam you know like like what a samurai beat a predator what right. a samurai beat yeah. this or whatever like we can explore ridiculous arguments like yeah. that in, in movies <laughs> we have the, between the budget and you know if we can get the rights to do it it's yeah um i i think that's the that's certainly the advantage of of the way that our entertainment is going these days oh yeah is that we can you know we can have these sort of um lightweight stupid arguments and, mm-hmm. and actually see it have them play out. Played out hell yeah <laughs> oh <pretty> yeah <laughs> in, in a way that's not a ridiculous fan film right know, exactly yeah so yeah all right well uh that is our review of prey and uh mm-hmm. that's our episode joe thank you so much yeah. for joining me um it was a blast yeah. to have you on Thank you, Mike. Um, I enjoyed being yeah. here. Oh, awesome. Uh, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you online and your work, all all that stuff? Sure. Yeah. I you know I'm uh, I am on Twitter. I'm not on there a whole lot. I'm at Joe uh, Joe Shear Nine. I think mm-hmm. uh, I I have a I, like I said I'm not on Twitter that much. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Joe Shear, and my last name is S H E A R E R. You're not gonna remember that, <laughs> uh, but. You know, I don't know. Try to find if you if you're hooked up with Matt, you'll chances are you could track me down if you really yeah. want to. Um, I, I'm on Facebook. Um, uh, again, I'm on Letterboxd. You can find me there as well. Um, you go to Medium Cool, uh, uh, a movie podcast, and uh, Midwest Film Journal on occasion. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm around and and uh, and doing stuff. And um, hopefully, I'll I'll be as active as I have been in in previous years. Nice. Uh, if not more. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me once again. Um, yeah. And thank you guys for listening and everything. I'm going to start playing us out. Um, yeah. Once again, check out, uh, all of Joe's work and Andy's. Um, and yeah. And also check out Patreon, patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. Have a lot of stuff on there. Um, just kind of throw a bunch of stuff at the wall, see what sticks, all that goes to support us. <laughs> um, so patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. Thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. And now, enjoy this short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. For the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, such as early access to episodes, TV, book, and movie reviews and reaction recordings, commentary tracks, and Patreon poopery episodes, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. Um, they come back to Titusville, Indiana to their home and they kind of stumble on, like they discover that inside the house, like in the walls of the house, uh, there is this steel, like metal alloy material that is growing in the house. And I, I really like this because it's Stephen King doing a, a good, like, extraterrestrial organal uh, like organized uh, wow organism 
without really explaining it or getting too in the weeds with the explanation or anything. It's really, really interesting to me because there is kind of this, maybe not throwaway line, but there's this line where Trent, the oldest kid, is like, well, I... Like I think it's a I think it's even like inner monologue. He's just thinking, um he supposes that maybe this uh maybe maybe what's happening is that while they were while they were away, something just kind of latched on to the house, uh, maybe came from space and just fell fell into the middle of happened to fall into the house and everything, and now it's growing and everything. And it's just really like the the machinations of it is are really are really satisfying because it's enough to really kickstart your imagination without getting too in the weeds with the detail. This podcast was edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by obsessiveviewer.com. You can find links to all of our shows at obsessiveviewer.com/podcasts. For exclusive bonus content, including reviews, commentaries, and B-roll episodes, you can subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.